How's that? Anyhow, Mary Jo's bulletin is kind of what we're going to preach on some today. But as I mentioned earlier, before we went to the Lord in prayer, have you ever seen such hate and, and such evil, just plain outright evil in the world today? Now, uh, the Bible teaches us that that can happen, and it's going to happen before the end of times, right? We know things are going to wax worse, but uh, there are things in our life that happen, and there is spiritual warfare here on this earth. You hear me? You're not just, it's not just me and you, it's because of the devil, amen? And, and by the things that he does, he affects you in different ways. And if you're a Christian, he's going to attack you simply because you love Christ Jesus. Amen? And he's going to find those ways to get after you at your weakest point. He knows that. But the world today is at war with the devil. They just don't realize it. Amen? They, the devil has them so blinded that they think it's with each other. And it's not. The devil is blinding people so that he can use them so that he can separate other people from the word of God. Amen. He's doing a pretty good job. Uh-huh. How many sees a difference in their lifetime? How wicked, how much more wicked the world is than it was when you were growing up? Uh-huh. All of us, haven't we? It's, it's a world today that the devil is trying to separate the Christians from the love of God. And he's doing a real good job. Today in our world, he's doing everything he can through our government to put a silence to the Christian's voice. Now you can say, well, preacher, you're going too far. That ain't right. But it's the truth. How many things have you seen that they've tried to do away with God in in our land and country. It started a long time ago. Devil, devil's been on a job for a long time. But we, we can notice it started real easy. Well, we just don't read the Bible in school anymore. Remember that? And now we have to accept things by law. Can't do that. Can't pray anymore. Do you think the devil just shouting about that? I bet he's howling real loud. Ha, ha, ha. I took away prayer. You can't pray to school anymore. You think he's satisfied with that? No. Pretty soon he don't want you to pray at all. He don't want you to pray in the United States of America who was founded on the basis of, of, of the Judeo-Christian attitude. Amen. Matter of fact, our forefather said without the Christian attitude, our country would not work. Are we not seeing that today? Are we not seeing how fouled up everything is simply because we've leaving God out of our hearts and our life and out of our government and out of the things of that control our land? We're trying to take God out of everything, and it's not working. Amen? Do we not understand that? In Ephesians, Paul says this, For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against power, against the rulers of darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. Amen? Are we not fighting the devil today? Are we not seeing this come to pass? Are we not seeing the devil's wickedness in our world? People who get guns and just go kill people because they're a different color or simply because they don't like them. Amen? The guy up in Ohio just didn't like anybody. And in 30 seconds before they got there, he killed that many people. What would have happened if they hadn't have been ready? Can you see how sin and the devil has blinded people? People can't see anymore. 
They, they don't know what is right. They haven't been taught about the love of God. We need God's love in our hearts and our life. Amen. Without that, we're going to be blinded too. What sets us free? Who is the light of the world? Amen. Come on, it's Christ Jesus. Without his light in our life, we're blind. Amen. We need to get him back in our hearts and in our lives. Amen. Do you hear me? In our hearts and in our lives. Not just set him over there in the corner because he's not happy with that and he's not going to be there. Amen. He wants your full, undivided attention. Amen. Pay attention to his word, his things. Pray to him. Talk with him so that he can guide you in this world. Today our world is blinded. In John, the 12th chapter and 41st says, He had blinded their eyes, hardened their hearts, lest they see with their eyes and understand with their hearts and turn and I would heal them. And this is Jesus quoting Isaiah. Isaiah's prophecy about the hardening of the hearts who would refuse to believe him. And that's in Isaiah 6 and 10. It's not God today who's hardening our hearts. It's us turning our black on God and being blinded by sin and the devil. We let the sin creep into our hearts and our life. And that's what blinds us, amen. Are we blinded because we've let sin in our life? Is our world today where God wants it to be? No. Are our God-fearing people standing for God? Are our God-fearing people seeking God out and saying, Lord, here am I, send me, amen? How often have we sat back and said, "Uh, I'll let somebody else do that? Hmm? (laughs) Yeah? I ain't going to do that. If I leave her long enough, she'll get it. Hmm. (laughs) She does, but I hear about it. Hear me? Now, if, (laughs) if... if, if we don't do what God wants us to do, we're going to get in trouble with God. Now, I get in trouble, see, pretty regular. I don't want to get in trouble with God, amen? He's a whole lot bigger and he's a whole lot stronger. He has things that I can't overcome without him, amen? I want God in my heart and my life. I want him to show me the way, help me find what he wants for me to do in my life. I don't know. He does, amen? I'm trusting in him to get me to heaven. I don't know the way without him. He says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Amen. I can't find heaven without Christ in my life. Got to have him in your heart and your life to find the way to heaven. I can't make it without him. You don't know something else? You can't either. That's right. I can't make it to heaven without him in my life. And you can't either. How do we keep him there? By trusting him, praying to him, reading his word, talking to him, assembling ourselves to church, and doing the things of God, being godly, amen. How do you be godly? You seek him out. You ask him to help you. You find ways to do what he wants, amen. Amen. Now, the reason why I said you find ways to do what he wants, the devil's going to hinder you. The devil's going to throw things in you that you, (laughs) man, he's going to throw everything he can. From flat tires to sores to pain to things in your life. What? Yeah, he does. Come on. There's things happening in your life simply because you love God. Amen? Amen. What do you mean, preacher? Well, the devil hates you because you love God. (laughs) It's the truth. How much do you love him? There you go. Is that not a good answer question? How much do we love God? Do we love God enough to serve him? Do we love God enough to stand up and do what he wants in our life? Uh Uh-huh. Do we love God enough to go to church? (laughs) Do we love God enough to do what he wants? If we have to testify or sing a song or teach a class, 
Are we willing to do what God wants in our life? It does make a difference. It does make a difference. Now, in Zephaniah, the first chapter, 17th verse, I will bring distress on mankind so that they shall walk like the blind because they have sinned against their Lord. Their blood shall be poured out like the dust and their flesh like dung. Amen. Without God in our life, this can happen. Amen. What happens when you're blind and don't know where you're going? Uh, you ever, Robert, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use you. I know you've been where it's been dark. He's been in an underground mine. And once you turn off your light, you're in the dark. Amen? And it's a good example. Once we turn off God's light in our life, we're in the dark. Amen? Just like Robert, when he's in the mine, if he turns off his light, he's in the dark. You can't see your hand in front of your face. You can't see nothing. It's just dark. That's where we are without God in our life. We are lost. Now, let's go to the other side. Have you ever been lost? <laughs> uh, I don't like to admit it. My wife says I can, I'll drive around for hours without asking anybody. But have you ever been lost, truly lost? It's not a good feeling, is it? Not to actually know where you are. Now, I've been up in the hills of West Virginia, and let me tell you, there's some of them back roads up there, up them hollers. That man lied, they all looked the same. You hear me? And I was trying to find this one place up there. I was doing some contracting. And they told me to go up a certain place. And I did. But it wasn't the right place. And I didn't think I'd ever see the light of day again. But it was way back up in them mountains. But you know how I got out? Hmm? I said, Lord, help me. <laughs> Amen. How many of us have gotten into trouble and we can't do it ourselves? Then we humble ourselves down and say, Lord, help me. Amen. Here's the point I'm getting at. When we get to the point in our life, we know that we need God in our life. He can help us. Until that point, he's not going to because you're not going to let him. Amen. Get to the point in your life where God can help you, where you're humble, you're submissive to his will. Then he can use it. He'll make you a usable vessel at that point in time. Yeah, <laughs> when you get humble and willing to do what he said. First John 20, that's the second chapter, 10th verse. But whoever hates his brother is in darkness and walks in the darkness and does not know where he is going because the darkness has his eyes blind. Amen. If we... <laughs> Don't like our brother. And we hate him. We're in trouble because we're in the dark. Amen. We don't have to like his way, but we need to love his soul. Amen. We need to be ready to pray for him so that he can find God, so that he can have God in his life. Amen. We need to be willing and ready to do the things that God wants us to do. Are we ready? Are we willing? Or do we do stuff just because that's what you do? Cliff, do you come to church on Sunday because that's what you do? Uh, I think sometimes that's what we do. But that's not what God wants, is it? He wants us to come to church because we can serve him. Now, I agree it should be a tradition in your life to go to church. Amen? There should be a longing in you as a human being that know that you need God in your life and you should want to go to church and I hope that's in everybody's heart that's in here. But if we don't go to church to serve God, we're going for the wrong reason, amen? We are blinded if we're not going to church to serve God, amen? Are we blind today? Are we blind to the things that God wants us to do? Hmm, only you know that. Yeah, you know. I don't, but you do. I know this. I know God's not happy when we're away from him, amen? He wants us to stay in his light, that he can lead us and guide us 
in this world. Amen? Because without God's love, we are blind. Amen? We are lost. And we won't find the way to heaven. You hear me? Without God's love and his light in our life, we're not going to make it to heaven. We need God's love in our life so that we can make it to heaven. Again, we need him today more than ever before. In 2 Corinthians, the fourth chapter, and I'm on a Read at the third verse. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. Now you hear me? Now does does your serving God make a difference? If we serve God, it's not hid. His light's not hid in us. And somebody can see his light in you. And you can make the difference. Amen. Listen to this. But if our gospel is hid, it is hid to them that are lost. Amen? So if we're not serving God, then we're not in his gospel. And his gospel's not in us. They don't know, do they? But if God's gospel's in us, they do know. Amen? They actually know. Do you think people know that you're a Christian today? Amen? In whom the God of this world hath blinded, the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. Amen? He don't want God's love and God's light, Christ's light to shine to him. He wants to keep them blind. Amen? So that he can let them believe his lie and be damned to hell forever. Amen? Don't you want God's love and his light in your life so that you can know where you are with him. For we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord and ourselves, your servants, for Jesus' sake. So if we're Christian, we're Christ-like. And Christ said he came to serve and he was a servant, right? What are we going to have to do if we follow Christ and be Christians, are we not going to be God's servant? Are we not going to serve and do the things that God wants? And that's to be obedient to Him. Sometimes it's hard to turn the other cheek, isn't it? Hmm? And, and, and we know that we're better people for doing it. But it's still hard, isn't it? We need the love of God in us so that we can have the things that God wants. So his light can shine through us, that the people of the world who's out in sin can see that there is a God, there is a Christ working in people's lives. Let Christ work in your life. He makes the difference in this world. He loves us, and he wants us to serve him. But if our gospel is hid, it is hid to them that are lost. Amen. The lost world needs God today more than ever before, don't they? Don't we need God's help more today than ever before? Does the devil have a lot of ways to get after you? Does it seem like every time that you're turning around, he's got a new one? Huh? Come on. If you're truly worshiping God, you're going to have to fight him, amen? You might as well get ready and get strong. You might as well do your exercise because he's coming, amen? He's there. He's not going to let you just skate on by, amen? He's going to throw some of the blocks and things in your path to slow you up if he can, amen? But let me tell you something. <laughs> we serve a risen Savior, one who overcome sin and the devil, amen, who can help us and give us and open our eyes so we're not blinded by the devil's tricks and his snares. He also gives us, <laughs> in the New Testament, armor. <laughs> uh, 
the things that can protect us against the fiery darts of the devil. He talked about the breastplate, our armor, our sword, our shield, our helmet, our shin guards, the things that we need to face sin and the devil. God will give them to us, but you can't fight him by yourself. You need God's light in your life, his love, his mercy, his goodness in you. Then you can stand and fight against sin and the devil. Amen. Without him, we can't. Without him, we're not going to win. Without him, we're not going to find the way to heaven. Amen? The Bible teaches us that the way that leads us to hell <laughs> is increasing, right? It's growing. It's getting bigger. Can you see that today? It also tells us the path that leads us to heaven was narrow, and few there be find it. Amen? Don't you want to be one of the few? Don't you want to be the one who could see the light of Christ so that you can work for him and make heaven your home? I do. I want Christ in my life. I need him today. I need him more today than ever before. I want him near and in my life. I want to know that he's there. What do you mean, preacher? Yeah, you can know if Christ is in your life. You know if you have him or not. Amen. You know, <laughs> and if you've kind of set him to the side, you might ought to look and go back to where you left him, amen, and get back with him and let him know that you love him, amen, and repent and let him back in your heart and your life. Do you think there's people today who wish that they could see and know God again? I've heard of people who turned God down too many times and, and went all over the world seeking, trying to find Christ to feel his or hear his knock at their door again that they might be saved. Don't wait. Today is the day of salvation. Tomorrow may be too late. And in Hebrews, the fourth chapter, six verse, Seeing therefore it remaineth that some must enter therein, and they whom it was first preached enter not because of unbelief. What's taking more people to hell today than anything else? Unbelief. They're not believing in Christ. Again, he limits a certain day, saying in David, Today, after so long a time as it is said, Today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your hearts. For if Jesus is giving them rest, then who, no, then would it not be afterwards spoken of another day? The remnant, therefore, a rest to the people of God. Amen. If we're in God, he's going to give us rest when that time comes. Amen. Let, uh, <clears throat> excuse me. For he that is centered into his rest, he, uh, he also hath ceased from his own works, as God did from his. Amen. If we're where God wants to be, we're not letting ourselves rule, but who are we letting rule and reign in our life? Christ. Amen. God is in our life. When we get ourselves out of the way, then God can use us. God can let our light shine at that point in time. For he that is entered into his rest, he also has ceased from his own works as God did from his. Let us labor, therefore, enter into that rest, lest any man fall after the same example of unbelief. Amen. For the work of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even unto the sunder the soul and the spirit of the joints and marrow, and is discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Amen. God's word and his love makes a difference in this world. And he wants us to enter into his rest, enter into where he wants us to be so that we can be his servant, so that we can do the things in our lives that he wants. Are you blinded by the world today? Has the devil blinded you from the things that God wants you to do? There are remedies to get rid of that, amen?
There are ways that you can defy the devil, and that's through Christ Jesus. His love and his strength he has shown already. And he came up with power, and he came up with the keys to death and hell. He won the battle, amen. He won the war. He is the winner. We have to trust and believe. And when we come to fight the devil, lean upon Christ Jesus. Amen. We can't fight him within ourselves, but God will fight him for us. Amen. Have you ever told somebody that was really getting on your case, well, God loves you and I do too? (laughs) You ever seen the expression on their face? Hmm. Yeah. God loves you so do I. There you go. Let me tell you a little tale, then I'll let you go. In my life, I've had things happen to me, and I often wondered why. Sometimes it was God getting my attention. God ever got your attention? (laughs) He's got mine. About a week or so ago, I was cutting the grass between mine and Stacey's house is a ditch. Yeah. Big pothole down there, about four foot deep, and I've been around that thing a hundred times. Getting right up to the edge of it, you know. I've done it a hundred times. Don't worry me. Except this time was different. I was on one of them skid sticks. Yeah. Well, I hung, I hung the cutting deck on the edge of the pavement. And it kicked me in the wrong way, so I yanked it the other way. Except I yanked the wrong way. I went off the bank backwards and lawnmower on top of me. I was lucky. Sheila was out at the low pool, and she sent me go over. They come running up. I checked myself out. I was okay. And I tried to push the lawnmower off of me. They tried to get the lawnmower off of me. They couldn't. I said, okay, don't panic. I'm not hurt. I'm okay. I said, run, go get my tracker. It's got a winch on it. I'll pull it off that way. Well, while they were gone, the gas tank started leaking Uh-oh. right down on me. I said, well, Lord, help me. What am I going to do? He says, I'm just going to give you a little incentive. I got scared, and I pushed the lawnmower off and got out myself. So we never know how God is going to do things in our life, but trust him. He's there. Ask him, amen. He'll show you the way. He'll give you a way to get to heaven. Amen. He'll show you what you need in your life. There's things sometime in life that we don't have control over. Amen. There's a lot of things in life we don't have control over. <laughs> but I'm serving one who does. And even if, even if the worst comes, if something happens to me, I know where I'm going. Amen. If I can't get that lawnmower off of me, <laughs> I, I know where I'm going. Amen. But I love him this morning. And if you don't have him in your life, you need him because you don't know what tomorrow holds. I'd been around that the hole lots of times. The last four or five years on that lawnmower, I never thought I'd end up at the bottom of it with it on top of me, but it did. <laughs> and I said, yes, Lord, I'll listen. What you got? Amen. I'm here. I'm your servant. Listen to him. And follow him. Brother Paul, if you'll give us a song. Are you listening? Or is God going to have to get your attention? You know, uh, let's <laughs> stand. God can get your attention. If you don't, believe me, just reading the Bible. Of the people and how God got their attention. Amen. And he can and he will. Do you love him this morning? Amen. We need him today more than ever before. Our land and country needs God more than ever before. It's just terrible how evil the world is. But it's not going to get better if we don't stand for God. Amen. One man can make a difference. You hear me? 
One man with God can make a difference. Amen? One can put ten, and ten can put a thousand, a thousand put ten thousand if God's on their side. Amen? Get God on your side. Let us take God home with us each and every day. Let us not be separated from Him. Let us listen and do what He wants. Let us begin to make that difference. Say, Lord, help me make a difference. Amen. He can and He will.